Paul, well, thanks for your time. Welcome to the Media Centre. Thank you. So you're on first Ryder Cup in 10 years, and um, you made the decision early in this year to rejoin the European Tour and make a stakey claim in joining this Ryder Cup side. What's it like finally being here at the Golf National? Amazing. I made a decision almost two years ago. Um, so to be sitting here now is uh, very satisfying, um, very enjoyable. Um, um, it was obviously the goal to make that team but then it's now the goal is to win points um, uh, which I believe I can do um, and I'm super excited for this week I mean to finally be here seen all the the images of what it was going to be like that first tee and to get a taste of it the last couple of days um, can't wait for tomorrow and what's it like pulling on that jersey again and being back in the team room uh, it's very special um, um, yeah it takes me I think I've, I've got more of an appreciation this time around uh, I've I've um, you know, taken notes this week and tried to be um, really pay attention to how special this is to um, to be wearing this uh, and to be standing alongside my my teammates and captain, vice captains, uh, and and everybody that supports us. Um, yeah, very proud and um, yeah, honoured to be donning the the blue and gold, blue Fantastic. and yellow. Welcome up some questions. We'll start on Mike Four. You in? Paul. Um, it's been 10 years since you were last here. Has the Ryder Cup changed in the 10 years since you've got here? Has it surprised even you? Uh, yes. Uh, the, the only previous European Ryder Cup I played was the K-Club, as you know, in 06. And, uh, the first tee wasn't like this one. Um, um, it, I think just bigger scale. You know, the, the passion is still as intense. Um, yeah, it's just, just, it's just grander, it's just bigger, it's just been amped up. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll let you know. Ask me the same question again on, on Sunday, because so far we've just, you know, it's, we haven't had the full experience yet. <laughs> so then, will the nerves be amped up as well? Or do you think you'll feel the nerves more than ever because it, it feels that bit bigger? I don't know. It felt really. I mean, felt great on the golf course yesterday. There was a. We had a small tasting of that first tee yesterday. Um, it was <laughs> really noisy. Um, Who did I play with? Henrik Torbjorn and uh, and uh, Tyrrell. And uh, and then when we walked off the tee and we looked back after about 100 yards, we looked back, realised it was about five percent full. <laughs> um, the noise would be a good thing. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, we, we're, as a team, we're ready to embrace it. And, and we know that the vast majority of that noise is for us, which is a massive advantage. Um, so we will I be nervous? I think, yeah. I mean, I remember back to Ryder Cups I've played before. I was always nervous. And it, it'll be no different tomorrow. But um, that quickly subsides and you get on with a match and you get into it. And then it's all about winning points. Mike Wonkara. Hey, Paul. Uh, I'm interested to know how you would describe your standing in the team. You've played Ryder Cups before, obviously, but not for a while. Veteran. <laughs> but is it, what's the difference, kind of, not just what the Ryder Cup's like, but being back in the team room after so long now with your Justin Roses, Rory McIlroy's, who have five each under their belt, and then a new, new crop coming through? My standing? Um, are you giving out lots of advice, or are you sort of sitting back and soaking no, it up? No, I'm, I'm playing a role on and off the golf course. Um, um, to be honest, we have so much depth, let's say, in, in both those departments that um, um, I say, yeah, it's, you know, I'm doing my bit. What we've, our guys are so good that, uh, and our captain is so on top of things that, um, not a lot needs to be done currently. It's it's all about getting ready for tomorrow. Um, you know, I feel our, our rookies don't behave and, and look like rookies. They're already incredibly accomplished. Uh, our, our veterans, guys who, like you've just mentioned, who have played you know five or more Ryder Cups, they know what they're doing. Um, and you've got multiple guys in the team room who have say I'm I'm not even I'm not the most experienced guy in the team room, even though I'm, and I'm not the oldest actually. Um, yeah, so maybe I'm not, I'm not a veteran yet, but I'm in a good position. I've got the, I've got the attributes, I've got the tools to help guys 
and I've got the tools and the attributes to uh, to play a different role with with other team members. Kind of far right, Paul. Mike three. Uh, Paul, Paul, when when you say you're you're um, taking notes, is it, is that like a personal diary you're making of this week, or what what's you thinking? Yeah, there? just yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. I'm not. I don't have a diary, but um, yeah, just standing back and making sure I absorb this. You know, Ryder Cups in the past have gone so quickly, um, and. Um, yeah, I just want to make sure I remember this. You know, this uh, at 41, you know, I don't know how many opportunities I'm going to get to play another European-based Ryder Cup. So um, I don't want this to be my last European-based Ryder Cup, but, you know, plain and simple, at 41, it, it's got a chance that it is. So I just want to make sure I pay attention to it and enjoy it, deliver points, play my heart out, but, but appreciate what's going on at the same time. Hurry back, Mike Four. So, um, aside from delivering points, do you feel as if you've got a, maybe a point to prove? Are, are you more determined this time around because it's been 10 years? No point to prove. No, I'm just here to play the golf I'm, I'm capable of um, and see what that produces. Um, we're playing against a brilliant US team. We have massive respect for them. And, um, um, you know, on paper, um, yeah. They're better than us on paper, so uh, no, there's no point to prove. Just here to to do my bit, and we'll see what happens. Stay in the middle, Mike. One. Paul, what did you miss the most? What did I miss the most? Um, the the team part of the the team element, the the vibes in the team room. Um, it, you know, you just. Yes, we hang out a lot on tour uh, around the world when we're playing, but it's not the same. Um, I miss putting on the on the clothes in the morning. Uh, I miss that first tee. I've missed a lot. I think, but I think the most is missing is yeah the vibes, the team, the uh, how close you get with these guys, and they become always do become really good friends. Friendships always grow in this situation. Right inside, Mike Three. Paul, does the nature of this course provide home advantage for Europe, and how does the course suit your game in particular? I think it. I think it does a little bit. Um, the course. The course definitely suits me. I drive the ball very well, um, and that's and it's a ball strikes golf course. Um, um, it's probably been documented. You've seen the, the rough out there. Uh, the fairway's not overly um, generous, and the rough is very penal. Um, the greens are large, and positioning the ball on the correct side of the hole is going to be paramount. Um, yeah, it's a definite advantage um, for us, I think. Our team certainly knows the course better than the Americans. And um, no, I think it suits my game very, very well. Um, uh, it's a different, I know the course, and, and I've, I've always known where to hit it around here. It's a, even for myself, though, it's different from what we've seen in French Opens. Just the, the, the lushness of what we're seeing and the, the preparation, the way it's set up. Um, so that's been a little bit of been a little bit of learning the last couple of days, but I feel very, very happy and comfortable with it. In the middle, Mike too. Paul, were there times where you felt like you'd never be in this position again? And, and how did you cope with those weeks, uh, Ryder Cup weeks, when you were not here competing and, and maybe home watching on TV? I think the, uh, the after uh, I missed out in 2010, and I want to say uh, my memories vague but 12 and 14 where I'd, I'd struggled with my game um, th those were probably the times when I you know wondered and hoped if I'd play another one um, if my form wasn't there um, I remember really good relationship with McGinley and um, wanting to play for him but just you know, wasn't playing nearly the golf I, I wanted to or needed to to get close to making his team. Um, same with with Ollie, um, and then missing out in 16. Although not being a member of, uh, not being eligible, not being a member of the European Tour. No, there was then. There was then. I felt like I could and would. It was just a matter of when. Um, it's. Um, uh, Yeah, sorry, I can't remember part, first part of your question. I'm just throwing my mind back, Tim. 
Oh, how do I cope? Um, I mean, it's always one, one of those when you, I don't know, I've always had ups and downs in my career. You know, whenever you're playing bad golf, you can never see kind of how to ever play good golf again. And when you're playing good golf, you can never understand how you ever played bad golf. So you don't, you just get on with it as a player, as an athlete, you just deal with it. Uh, I've always loved the work. And so when I struggled with my game in uh, years sort of, you know, 12 and 14 when I didn't make these teams, it was just a, a quest of let's, let's get better. What do I need to work on? There are opportunities. Um, you know, it's never been a, an issue to deal with it. You just work through it. Did I watch them? Oh, yeah. Best, it's the best thing on TV. It's the, it's the greatest thing on TV. Stay in the middle, Mike, too. Oh, okay. Uh, Mike, one, please. Paul, I don't have any statistics to back this up, but it, it just seems like over the last 30 or 40 years um, at, a, at a Ryder Cup compared with a, with a major, you see more spectacular, memorable, brilliant shots than you do bad moments, more, more rising than, than falling. If that's the case, why, why do you think that is? Uh, the repercussions are only loss of hole if, it doesn't, if the shot doesn't come off, Doug, plain and simple. Um, I mean, thank goodness we're playing match play around this golf course this week. Um, wouldn't want to play stroke play around here. Uh, you would see defensive golf around here if it were stroke play this week, but you'll see spectacular stuff again this week. The golf course sort of demands it, really. Uh, the situation demands it. Um, you know, four balls, for example, you have the opportunity. You can relax. You've got, uh, you've got kind of an insurance policy standing next to you. Um, I'm always, I've always been, uh, part of it I can't answer for you because uh, guys are always nervous um, every day, uh, especially Friday, and yet they always rise and they always perform brilliantly. And we'll, I'm sure we'll see the same tomorrow. You know, guys will be extremely nervous on that first tee with, I don't know, probably just shy of 10,000 people chanting and singing. And yet it'll be spectacular from the get-go. Um, it's the nature of the Ryder Cup. Right inside Mike three. Paul, just wondering if the, the notes you're taking are any part of being sort of useful if you were perhaps to be captain yourself one day. And if, if, it's, if it's a simple note of that question, um, could you possibly compare how Thomas is doing compared to the other captains you've played under? Um, I don't know what you're talking about with that first part. Um, Neither did I, really. Comparing Thomas is, it's very, I've never compared captains to each other because the three that I've previously played for have all been very different styles and all been brilliant in their own different way. Um, I mean, you, you know, you're asking me to compare like Langer to Woozy, I mean, come on. Um, but the result was the same. And, um, and how, how you captain, I don't know, I've never been a captain, but it, it's probably determined with the, the team you've got and what needs to be done. And um, Thomas, is, Thomas has been brilliant. Um, yeah, I won't, yeah, won't compare him to the other three I've played for, but he's been absolutely brilliant. And, uh, and every, you know, every player is so up for this week, um, so wanting to play great golf, not only for their country and their continent, but for him because of how hard he's, he's worked and, and um, uh, the energy that he's put into this. Um, yeah, we, you know, if I can say this, you know, we all kind of, you know, we love Thomas Bjorn and, you know, cuddly Thomas, he's been absolutely fantastic. Time for two more questions. Mike Four at the back. Yeah, Paul, can you talk about winning and losing? How does that color the week's experience for you guys? How does winning and losing? Color the experience of the week. Um, I think it's fairly black and white. Um, it's why we're here, is to win. So um, the um, uh, you know these amazing dinners like we had last night, and and the grandeur, the opening ceremonies. It's it's all about the result at the end of the day. So that's all that matters. Um, so, uh, yeah. Last question, question two. 
Paul, this is obviously the last Ryder Cup before Britain leaves the EU as an Englishman. The the unity, the fans, it's particularly the English and British fans with with European hats on and things. Do you, do you personally find that heartening, or uh, like the unity on display uh, at such a such a tumultuous time for the country? I hadn't even thought about it. I've got some. Uh, hopefully, I've got some matches to play the next couple of days. So. Um, Sorry, I hadn't even thought about it. Good to know you focused on the golf ball. Yeah. Thanks a lot for your time. <laughs> so. Done? Yep. Perfect. Thank you, everybody. Allez, le bleu.